Bama beat Tennessee 34 to 20 yesterday. I forget where it is in Genesis, but somewhere along the way, when God invented college football and he said, let there be four quarters, this right here is why football games are four quarters. And I have the iJosh in my hand right now. And I grew up in the South. So naturally, I got a lot of buddies from all different program affiliations. And I got a fair amount of my social contingent that are Bama fans. And they sent some very objectionable content to me at halftime in this game yesterday. They know who they are. But I will not out them. Good for me for being a good friend. Uh, Don't text during games. Don't tweet whatever you do during games. Because it's just going to come back to bite you. And it came back to bite a lot of Bama fans. I had folks with cigars in their mouths an hour after they had written the team off and said, let's get on to 2024. Like, what are we doing, guys? Come on now. The game will end quick enough. You don't have to get ahead of the curve. It's not like you're beating social traffic or anything like that. Tennessee led 20-7 to at halftime of this game. I was on a plane watching the second half unfold somewhere over Kentucky, I guess. And all of a sudden... Bama scores, and then they score again, and then again, and all of a sudden they've, they've gone 27-0 in the second half. Three explosive passes. We talked about that stat the other day. Talked about how Bama hadn't run the ball great, but they played good defense, and Milrow kept hitting bombs, and he did again yesterday. This is the one game I was ready to see, though, because this is the one team in Tennessee that just ran the ball all over a and and I wondered – Will they be the team that kind of runs the ball on Bama more so than Bama thinks anyone's capable of running it on them? And it wasn't really the case. Tennessee had 3.5 yards per carry. Now, look, Bama hadn't been good running the ball all year. So the fact that they ran it for 3.3 yards per carry doesn't surprise me. Tennessee probably needed it to work out a little bit better than that. Alabama outscoring the opposition 79-24 to in third quarters right now, by the way. When they lost against Texas... And we were there for that game. When they lost against Texas, they looked vulnerable. And then I would argue they looked even worse the next week, albeit in a win, against USF. Pause that moment in time. Go back to week three, post-week three. Bama just lost to USF. And you look, and they've got Ole Miss coming up. And they go back-to-back road games at Mississippi State, at a and They got Arkansas coming in before you know Arkansas is a disaster. And then they've got Tennessee. So Tennessee will be the eighth consecutive game they've played. Then they'll have the bye week. What did you think their record was going to be? Surely most people thought there'd be at least one more loss coming. I may have been among you, by the way. And they haven't lost one. Now, they're still in the thick of everything. All their goals are in front of them. Quarterback is at least figured out. Like, you're not going to have elite quarterback play there, but it's figured out. And you got Tommy Reese probably... Calling about as good a game plan as he's going to call for Jalen Milrow. Defense is on fire, so they can win games defensively. They've got a wide receiver one in Jermaine Burton. What are they capable of? They got LSU in two weeks. What is Alabama capable of? I feel that way about a few teams right now that, that had kind of been written off because you're judging them against past versions of themselves instead of judging them against this year's field. Like, I had someone tell me uh, Friday, Washington would blow out Bama. How, how in the world do you, Washington didn't score an offensive touchdown against Arizona State last night. But you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, they just smoke Alabama. No, you don't. You just hold the teams to different standards because you come to expect excellence from one and the other one's the hot new product on the block and you don't process the information you get from them the same. Uh, the fact of the matter is, Bama can still be competitive. Bama can still beat anyone in the country. And there are other teams already with blemishes that can still do the same. Uh, I got news for you. LSU's got two losses. And LSU, if you mess around and let them stay in this thing, LSU could wreck a lot of parties of teams ranked higher than them. So you got to be happy if you're a Bama fan right now, given the limitations of this year's team, that you're one loss going into the bye, get some guys healthy, and then come out of it. Your stretch run starts with LSU. And I got another game that I'm looking at that's, that its significance is heavily dependent on that Bama-LSU game. There's there are a couple of games sneaking around out there right now. This really doesn't have a lot to do with Bama. I'll get back on track in a second. 
there are a couple of games sneaking out around right now on that SEC helmet schedule. One of them is Missouri at Georgia in a couple of weeks. And that one, I think some people are starting to at least take notice of. But uh, does anyone remember from your preseason study that Ole Miss goes to Georgia this year? Late in the year, they go to Georgia. And Ole Miss got, I think, one conference loss right now. Now, they've got a win over LSU. I want you to picture a world where LSU goes to Bama and wins. So Bama's got two conference losses. So even though they've beaten Ole Miss, Ole Miss is ahead of them in the standings. And Ole Miss is going to Georgia possibly with a chance to not clinch the SEC West, but take leaps and bounds towards being favored to clinch the SEC West. Because, I mean, at that point, who would they have? They'd have Mississippi State, I think, left. Yeah. No one's talking about Ole Miss, Georgia. Like, nobody's talking about that game right now. With good reason. It's a couple of weeks away. Don't worry. It'll get here fast enough. Officiating was a very big point of contention in this game. Yes, I will address it. I will not address it to the appeasement of Tennessee fans because I talk about officiating the same way on the show all the time. It's one thing to say, wow, the officiating was bad in this game. Well, of course it was. I saw the same thing you did. And I've had a problem, a longstanding problem, with the way college games are officiated, period. Because there's no accountability. At least not that you or I are ever privy to. I mean, certainly you can can get private correspondence from the league office. Monday, 48 hours later, they can tell you, we missed this call. We missed that call. What they don't tell you is, here, here's a W instead of the L we gave you. So what does it really matter? what you hear. Josh Heupel didn't care what he hears from the league office Monday. So if you got a problem with the officiating, join the club. Yes, I felt that way for a long time. However, a lot of you want to, you want me to traffic in the whole, well, Bama's got the officials in their back pocket sort of thing. No, they don't. No, they don't. It's a losing proposition for me to make this argument on the show. Like there are hard data and statistics profiles that I could put in front of your face where Alabama has actually been victimized disproportionately and for an extended period of time by the very league office that you think they possess in their back pocket. It just fits the narrative you want to believe in. You had 27 unanswered hung on you in the second half. That's why you lost the game. Officiating is officiating. Mima used to always tell me, put the game out of reach early, Don't leave it in the hands of officials or they will break your heart. And she was right. And a lot of you are heartbroken right now. And in reality, if you build on a 27 lead, you don't have to be heartbroken. Officiating is not going to get any better is my point. So um, everybody, the only fan base famously that I think has a claim to this is Arkansas. Because I really do believe the officiating world is just tilted towards Arkansas or away from Arkansas. Other than that, Uh, You're going to benefit from it. You're going to be victimized by it. Suck it up. I know that's not what you want to hear from me. It was egregious. Okay, I agree with you guys to a point. It was egregious. Some of that stuff was terrible. But um, not nefariously terrible is all I'm saying.